A knight is a person granted an honorary title of knighthood by a monarch or other political leader for service to the monarch or country, especially in a military capacity. Historically, in Europe, knighthood has been conferred upon mounted warriors. During the High Middle Ages, knighthood was considered a class of lower nobility. By the Late Middle Ages, the rank had become associated with the ideals of chivalry, a code of conduct for the perfect courtly Christian warrior. Often, a knight was a vassal who served as a fighter for a lord, with payment in the form of land holdings. The lords trusted the knights, who were skilled in battle on horseback. Since the early modern period, the title of knight is purely honorific, usually bestowed by a monarch, as in the British honor system, often for non-military service to the country. Historically, the ideals of chivalry were popularized in medieval literature especially the matter of Britain and matter of France, the former based on Geoffrey of Monmouth's Historia Regum Britannalau, written in the 1130s. Sir Thomas Mallory's La Morte d'Arthur, written in 1485, was important in defining the ideal of chivalry which is essential to the modern concept of the knight as an elite warrior sworn to uphold the values of faith, loyalty, courage, and honor. During the Renaissance, the genre of chivalric romance became popular in literature, growing ever more idealistic and eventually giving rise to a new form of realism in literature popularized by Miguel de Cervantes' Don Quixote. This novel explored the ideals of knighthood and their incongruity with the reality of Cervantes' world. In the late medieval period, new methods of warfare began to render classical knights in armor obsolete, but the titles remained in many nations. Some orders of knighthood, such as the Knights Templar, have become the subject of legend. Others have disappeared into obscurity. Today, a number of orders of knighthood continue to exist in several countries, such as the English Order of the Garter, the Swedish Royal Order of the Seraphim, and the Royal Norwegian Order of St. Olav. Each of these orders has its own criteria for eligibility, but knighthood is generally granted by a head of state to selected persons to recognize some meritorious achievement. Knighthood in the Middle Ages was closely linked with horsemanship from its origins in the 12th century until its final flowering as a fashion among the high nobility in the Duchy of Burgundy in the 15th century. This linkage is reflected in the etymology of chivalry, cavalier and related terms. The special prestige given to mounted warriors finds a parallel in the Furusia in the Muslim world, and the Greek Hippus and the Roman Eeks of classical antiquity. Etymology, the word knight, from Old English knit, is a cognate of the German word necht. This meaning, of unknown origin, is common among West Germanic languages. Anglo-Saxon knit had no particular connection to horsemanship, referring to any servant. A Rdcniht was a servant delivering messages or patrolling coastlines on horseback. Old English knight the D had the meaning of adolescence by 1300. A narrowing of the generic meaning servant to military follower of a king or other superior is visible by 1100. The specific military sense of a knight being a mounted warrior in the heavy cavalry emerges only in the Hundred Years' War. The verb to knight appears around 1300, and from the same time, the word knighthood shifted from adolescence to rank or dignity of a knight. In this respect English differs from most other European languages where the equivalent word emphasizes the status and prosperity of war horse ownership. Linguistically, the association of horse ownership with social status extends back at least as far as ancient Greece, where many aristocratic names incorporated the Greek word for horse, like Hipparchus and Xanthip. The character Pheodipides in Aristophanes' Clouds has his grandfather's name with hype inserted to sound more aristocratic. Similarly, the Greek a one quarter plus or minus i euro i euro i micron i i is commonly translated knight. At least in its sense of the highest of the four Athenian social classes, those who could afford to maintain a war horse in the state service. An equestrian was a member of the second highest social class in the Roman Republic and early Roman Empire. This class is often translated as knight. The medieval knight, however, was called miles in Latin. Both Greek hippos and Latin equus are derived from the Proto-Indo-European word root equa meaning horse. In the later Roman Empire the classical Latin word for horse, equus, 
was replaced in common parlance by vulgar Latin caballus, sometimes thought to derive from Gaulish caballos. From caballus arose terms in the various Romance languages cognate to the English cavalier, Old Italian cavalier, Italian cavallo, Spanish caballero, French chevalier, Portuguese cavallero, Romanian cavalier. The Germanic languages feature terms cognate to the English rider, German ritter, and Dutch and Scandinavian ridder. These words are cognates derived from Germanic rad down to ride, derived from the Proto-Indo-European root reed. Origins of Medieval Knighthood In ancient Rome there was a knightly class ordo equestris from which European knighthood may have been derived. Knighthood as known in Europe was characterized by the combination of two elements, feudalism and service as a mounted warrior. Both arose under the reign of the Frankish Emperor Charlemagne, from which the knighthood of the Middle Ages can be seen to have had its genesis. Some portions of the armies of Germanic peoples who occupied Europe from the 3rd century CE, had always been mounted, and some armies, such as those of the Ostrogoths, comprised mainly cavalry. However it was the Franks who came to dominate Western and Central Europe after the fall of Rome, and they generally fielded armies composed of large masses of infantry, with an infantry elite, the Comitatus, which often rode to battle on horseback rather than marching on foot. Riding to battle had two key advantages, it reduced fatigue, particularly when the elite soldiers wore armor. And it gave the soldiers more mobility to react to the raids of the enemy, particularly the Muslim invasions which reached Europe in 711. So it was that the armies of the Frankish ruler and warlord Charles Martel, which defeated the Umayyad Arab invasion at the Battle of Tours in 732, were still largely infantry armies, the elites riding to battle but dismounting to fight, providing a hard call for the levy of the infantry war bands. As the 8th century progressed in the Carolingian Age, the Franks were generally on the attack, and larger numbers of warriors took to their horses to ride with the emperor in his wide-ranging campaigns of conquest. At about this time the Franks increasingly remained on horseback to fight on the battlefield as true cavalry rather than as mounted infantry, and would continue to do so for centuries thereafter. Although in some nations the knight returned to foot combat in the 14th century, the association of the knight with mounted combat with a spear, and later a lance, remained a strong one. These mobile mounted warriors made Charles Magnier Euro unregistered trademark s far flung conquests possible, and to secure their service he rewarded them with grants of land called benefices. These were given to the captains directly by the emperor to reward their efforts in the conquests, and they in turn were to grant benefices to their warrior contingents, who were a mix of free and unfree men. In the century or so following Charles Magnier Euro unregistered trademark s death, his newly empowered warrior class grew stronger still, and Charles the Bald declared their fiefs to be hereditary. The period of chaos in the 9th and 10th centuries, between the fall of the Carolingian central authority and the rise of separate western and eastern Frankish kingdoms, only entrenched this newly landed warrior class. This was because governing power, and defense against Viking, Magyar and Saracen attack became an essentially local affair which revolved around these new hereditary local lords and their demesnes. In the early medieval period any well-equipped horseman could be described as a knight, or miles in Latin. In the course of the 12th century knighthood became a social rank with a distinction being made between millets Greek armor and millets nobiles. As the term knight became increasingly confined to denoting a social rank, the military role of fully armored cavalrymen gained a separate term, man at arms. Although any medieval knight going to war would automatically serve as a man at arms, not all men at arms were knights. The first military orders of knighthood were of Knights Hospitaller and of the Holy Sepulchre, both founded at the First Crusade of 1099, followed by the Knights Templar and the Order of St. Lazarus. At the time of their foundation, these were intended as monastic orders, whose members would act as simple soldiers protecting pilgrims. It was only over the following century, with the successful conquest of the Holy Land and the rise of the Crusade Estates, that these orders became powerful and prestigious. The ideal of chivalry as the ethos of the Christian warrior, and the transmutation of the term knight from the meaning servant, soldier, and of chevalier mounted soldier, to refer to a member of this ideal class, 
is significantly influenced by the Crusades, on one hand inspired by the military orders of monastic warriors, as seen retrospectively from the point of view of the beginning late Middle Ages, and on the other hand influenced by Islamic ideals of Furusaya. Maximilian I, Holy Roman Emperor is often referred to as the last true knight. He was the last Holy Roman Emperor to lead his troops onto the battlefield. Chivalric Code Knights were expected, above all, to fight bravely and to display military professionalism and courtesy. When knights were taken as prisoners of war, they were customarily held for ransom in somewhat comfortable surroundings. This same standard of conduct did not apply to non-knights who were often slaughtered after capture, and who were viewed during battle as mere impediments to knights getting to other knights to fight them. Chivalry developed as an early standard of professional ethics for knights, who were relatively affluent horse owners and were expected to provide military services in exchange for landed property. Early notions of chivalry entailed loyalty to one's liege lord and bravery in battle, similar to the values of the heroic age. During the Middle Ages, this grew from simple military professionalism into a social code including the values of gentility, nobility and treating others reasonably. In the Song of Roland, Roland is portrayed as the ideal knight, demonstrating unwavering loyalty, military prowess and social fellowship. In Wolfram von Ischenbach's Parzival, chivalry had become a blend of religious duties, love and military service. Ramon Leal's Book of the Order of Chivalry demonstrates that by the end of the 13th century, chivalry entailed a litany of very specific duties, including riding war horses, jousting, attending tournaments, holding round tables and hunting, as well as aspiring to the more ethereal virtues of faith, hope, charity, justice, strength, moderation and loyalty. Knights of the late medieval era were expected by society to maintain all these skills and many more, as outlined in Baldur Sarcasticlian's The Book of the Courtier, though the book's protagonist, Count Ludovico, states the first and true profession of the ideal courtier must be that of arms. Chivalry, derived from the French word chevalier, simultaneously denoted skilled horsemanship and military service, and these remained the primary occupations of knighthood throughout the Middle Ages. Chivalry and religion were mutually influenced during the period of the Crusades. The early Crusades helped to clarify the moral code of chivalry as it related to religion. As a result, Christian armies began to devote their efforts to sacred purposes. As time passed, clergy instituted religious vows which required knights to use their weapons chiefly for the protection of the weak and defenseless, especially women and orphans, and of churches. With the rise of Renaissance humanism and moral relativism, the Knight de Euro and chivalry along with him the Euro lost much of his relevance to society, and the idealism of chivalric romance was fundamentally rejected in Nicolas Squared Machiavelli's Il Principe and more directly derided in Miguel de Cervantes's Don Quixote. The medieval literary genre of chivalric romance had been the high watermark of idealism and romanticism in literature, but in the 16th century Machiavelli instructed aspiring political rulers to be ruthlessly pragmatic and to apply the principle that the ends justify the means, directly counter to the high-flown idealism of late medieval chivalry. Later, the high-flown values of chivalric romance were heavily satirized in Cervantes's Don Quixote, which portrayed the charmingly idealistic protagonist as a lovable but hopelessly delusional imbecile. Medieval and Renaissance Literature Knights and the ideals of knighthood featured largely in medieval and Renaissance literature, and have secured a permanent place in literary romance. While chivalric romances abound, particularly notable literary portrayals of knighthood include The Song of Roland, Geoffrey Chaucer's The Knight's Tale, Baldur Sarcasticlian's The Book of the Courtier, and Miguel de Cervantes' Don Quixote, as well as Sir Thomas Mallory's La Morte d'Arthur and other Arthurian tales. The ideal courtier a Euro the chivalrous knight a Euro of Baldur Sarcastiglian's The Book of the Courtier became a model of the ideal virtues of nobility. Castiglian's tale took the form of a discussion among the nobility of the court of the Duke of Urbino, in which the characters determined that the ideal knight should be renowned not only for his bravery and prowess in battle, but also as a skilled dancer, athlete, singer and orator, and he should also be well read in the humanities and classical Greek and Latin literature. Later Renaissance literature, 
such as Miguel de Cervantes's Don Quixote, rejected the code of chivalry as unrealistic idealism. The rise of Christian humanism in Renaissance literature demonstrated a marked departure from the chivalric romance of late medieval literature, and the chivalric ideal ceased to influence literature over successive centuries until it saw some pockets of revival in post-Victorian literature. Heraldry and Other Attributes One of the greatest distinguishing marks of the knightly class was the flying of colored banners, to display power and to distinguish knights in battle and in tournaments. Knights are generally armigerous, and indeed they played an essential role in the development of heraldry. As heavier armor, including enlarged shields and enclosed helmets, developed in the Middle Ages, the need for marks of identification arose, and with colored shields and surcoats, coat armory was born. Armorial roles were created to record the knights of various regions or those who participated in various tournaments. Additionally, Knights adopted certain forms of regalia which became closely associated with the status of knighthood. At the Battle of Cra Copyrightsy, Edward III of England sent his son, Edward, the Black Prince, to lead the charge into battle and when pressed to send reinforcements, the king replied, Say to them that they suffer him this day to win his spurs. Clearly, by this time, spurs had already become emblematic of knighthood. The livery collar is also specifically associated with knighthood. Types of knighthood, Militaria Euro Monastic Orders of Knighthood. Knights Hospitaller, founded during the First Crusade, 1099, Order of the Holy Sepulchre, also founded during the First Crusade in circa 1099, Order of Saint Lazarus established about 1100, Knights Templar, founded 1118, disbanded 1307, Teutonic Knights established about 1190, and ruled the monastic state of the Teutonic Knights in Prussia until 1525, other orders were established in the Iberian Peninsula, under the influence of the orders in the Holy Land and the Crusader movement of the Reconquista, the Order of Avis, established in Avis in 1143. The Order of Alca Ntara, established in Alca Ntara in 1156, the Order of Calatrava, established in Calatrava in 1158, the Order of Santiago, established in Santiago in 1164. Chivalric Orders After the Crusades, the military orders became idealized and romanticized, resulting in the late medieval notion of chivalry, as reflected in the Arthurian romances of the time. The creation of chivalric orders was fashionable among the nobility in the 14th and 15th centuries, and this is still reflected in contemporary honors systems, including the term order itself. Examples of notable orders of chivalry are, the Order of St. George, founded by Charles I of Hungary in 1325 June, the Order of the Most Holy Annunciation, founded by Count Amadeus VI in 1346, the Order of the Garter, founded by Edward III of England around 1348, the Order of the Dragon, founded by King Sigismund of Luxembourg in 1408, the Order of the Golden Fleece, founded by Philip III, Duke of Burgundy in 1430, the Order of St. Michael, founded by Louis XI of France in 1469, the Order of the Thistle, founded by King James VII of Scotland in 1687, the Order of the Elephant, which may have been first founded by Christian I of Denmark, but was founded in its current form by King Christian V in 1693, the Order of the Bath, founded by George I in 1725, honorific orders of knighthood, from roughly 1560, purely honorific orders were established, as a way to confer prestige and distinction, unrelated to military service and chivalry in the more narrow sense. Such orders were particularly popular in the 17th and 18th centuries, and knighthood continues to be conferred in various countries, the United Kingdom and some Commonwealth of Nations countries such as Australia. Some European countries, such as the Netherlands and Belgium. The Holy See are Euro Sea Papal Orders of Chivalry. There are other monarchies and also republics that also follow this practice. Modern knighthoods are typically awarded in recognition for services rendered to society, which are not necessarily martial in nature. The British musician Elton John, for example, is a knight bachelor, thus entitled to be called Sir Elton. The female equivalent is a dame. In the United Kingdom, 
honorary knighthood may be awarded in two different ways. The first is the membership of one of the pure orders of chivalry such as the Order of the Garter, the Order of the Thistle and the Dormant Order of St. Patrick, of which all members are knighted. In addition, many British orders of merit, namely the Order of the Bath, the Order of St. Michael and St. George, the Royal Victorian Order and the Order of the British Empire are part of the British Honours System, and the award of their highest ranks, comes together with an honorary knighthood, making them a cross between orders of chivalry and orders of merit. By contrast, a ward of other British orders of merit, such as the Distinguished Service Order, the Order of Merit and the Order of the Companions of Honour does not confer a knighthood. The second is being granted honorary knighthood by the British Sovereign without membership of an order, the Amadi being called Knight Bachelor. In the British honour system the knightly style of Sir is accompanied by the given name, and optionally the surname. So, Elton John may be called Sir Elton or Sir Elton John, but never Sir John. Similarly, actress Judy Dench DBE may be addressed as Dame Judy or Dame Judy Dench, but never Dame Dench. Wives of knights, however, are entitled to the honorific lady before their husband's surname. Thus Sir Paul McCartney's ex-wife was formerly styled Lady McCartney. The style Dame Heather McCartney could be used for the wife of a knight. However, this style is largely archaic and is only used in the most formal of documents, or where the wife is a dame in her own right. The husbands of dames have no honorific, so Dame Norma's husband remained John Major until he received his own knighthood. Since the reign of Edward VII o'clock in holy orders in the Church of England has not normally received the accolade on being appointed to a degree of knighthood. He receives the insignia of his honour and may place the appropriate letters after his name or title but he may not be called sir and his wife may not be called lady. This custom is not observed in Australia and New Zealand, where knighted Anglican clergymen routinely use the title sir. Ministers of other Christian churches are entitled to receive the accolade. For example, Sir Norman Cardinal Gilroy did receive the accolade on his appointment as Knight Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire in 1969. A knight who is subsequently ordained does not lose his title. A famous example of this situation was the REVD Sir Derek Pattinson, who was ordained just a year after he was appointed Knight Bachelor, apparently somewhat to the consternation of officials at Buckingham Palace. A woman clerk in holy orders may be appointed a dame in exactly the same way as any other woman since there are no military connotations attached to the honour. A clerk in holy orders who is a baronet is entitled to use the title sir. Outside the British honours system it is usually considered improper to address a knighted person as sir or dame. Some countries, however, historically did have equivalent honorifics for knights, such as Cavalier in Italy and Ritter in Germany and the Austro-Hungarian Empire. State knighthoods in the Netherlands are issued in three orders, the Order of William, the Order of the Netherlands Lion, and the Order of Orange Nassau. Additionally there remain a few hereditary knights in the Netherlands. In Belgium, honorary knighthood can be conferred by the king to particularly meritorious individuals such as scientists or eminent businessmen, or for instance to astronaut Frank de Wynne the second Belgian in space. This practice is similar to the award of the title of Knight Bachelor in the United Kingdom. In addition, there still are a number of hereditary knights in Belgium. In France and Belgium, one of the ranks conferred in some orders of merit, such as the La Copyright Guinde d'Honneur, the Audrey National du Mar Copyright Right, the Audrey des Palmes et Cardes Copyright Mix and the Audrey des Arts et des Lettres in France, and the Order of Leopold. Order of the Crown and Order of Leopold II in Belgium, is that of Chevalier or Ridder, meaning knight. However, those awarded this order are not being knighted in the sense discussed in this article and should not be confused with honorary or hereditary knights. In the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth the monarchs tried to establish chivalric orders but the hereditary lords who controlled the union did not agree and managed to ban such assemblies. They feared the king would use orders to gain support for absolutist goals and to make formal distinctions among the peerage which could lead to its legal breakup into two separate classes, and that the king would later play one against the other and eventually limit the legal privileges of hereditary nobility. 
but finally in 1705 King August II managed to establish the Order of the White Eagle which remains Poland's most prestigious order of that kind. The head of state confers knighthoods of the order to distinguished citizens, foreign monarchs and other heads of state. The order has its chapter. There were no particular honorifics that would accompany a knight's name as historically all its members would be royals or hereditary lords anyway. So today, a knight is simply referred to as name surname, Knight of the White Eagle. Hereditary knighthoods, Continental Europe In Continental Europe different systems of hereditary knighthood have existed or do exist. Ridder, Dutch for knight, is a hereditary noble title in the Netherlands. It is the lowest title within the nobility system and ranks below that of Baron, but above John Keir. The collective term for its holders in a certain locality is the Ridders Chap. In the Netherlands no female equivalent exists. Before 1814, the history of nobility is separate for each of the eleven provinces that make up the Kingdom of the Netherlands. In each of these, there were in the early Middle Ages a number of feudal lords who often were just as powerful, and sometimes more so than the rulers themselves. In old times, no other title existed but that of knight. In the Netherlands only ten knightly families are still extant, a number which steadily decreases because in that country ennoblement or incorporation into the nobility is not possible anymore. Likewise Ridder, Dutch for knight, or the equivalent French chevalier is a hereditary noble title in Belgium. It is the second lowest title within the nobility system above a Permel Q or Jonk here Jonk and below Baron. Like in the Netherlands, no female equivalent of the title exists. Belgium still does have about 232 registered knightly families. The German and Austrian equivalent of an hereditary knight is a Ritter. This designation is used as a title of nobility in all German-speaking areas. Traditionally it denotes the second lowest rank within the nobility, standing above Edler, and below Freer. For its historical association with warfare and the landed gentry in the Middle Ages, it can be considered roughly equal to the titles of knight, or baronet. In France, the hereditary knighthood existed in regions formerly under Holy Roman Empire control. One family ennobled with that title is the House of Horticlock even if its most recent members used a pontifical title of count. Italy and Poland also had the hereditary knighthood that existed within the nobility system. Ireland, there are traces of the continental system of hereditary knighthood in Ireland. Notably all three of the following belong to the Welsh Norman Fitzgerald dynasty, created by the Earls of Desmond, acting as Earls Palatine, for their kinsmen. Knight of Kerry or Green Knight a Euro the current holder is Sir Adrian Fitzgerald, 6th Baronet of Valencia, 24th Knight of Kerry. He is also a Knight of Malta, and currently President of the Irish Association of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta. Knight of Glyn or Black Knight a Euro now dormant. White Knight a Euro now dormant. Another Irish family were the O'Shaughnessys who were created knights in 1553 under the policy of surrender and regrant. British baronetcies, since 1611, the British Crown has awarded a hereditary title in the form of the baronetcy. Like knights, baronets are accorded the title sir. Baronets are not peers of the realm, and did not sit in the House of Lords when it was a hereditary house, therefore like knights they remain commoners in the view of the British legal system. However, unlike knights, the title is hereditary and the recipient does not receive an accolade. The position is therefore more comparable with hereditary knighthoods in continental European orders of nobility, such as Ritter, than with knighthoods under the British orders of chivalry. Women in orders of knighthood, England and the United Kingdom, women were appointed to the Order of the Garter almost from the start. In all, 68 women were appointed between 1358 and 1488, including all consorts. Though many were women of royal blood, or wives of knights of the garter, some women were neither. They wore the garter on the left arm, and some are shown on their tombstones with this arrangement. After 1488, no other appointments of women are known, although it is said that the garter was granted to Neapolitan poet Laura Bascio Teresina, by King Edward VI. In 1638, a proposal was made to revive the use of robes for the wives of knights in ceremonies, but this did not occur. 
queen consorts have been made ladies of the garter since 1901. The first non-royal woman to be made Lady Companion of the Garter was the Duchess of Norfolk in 1990, the second was the Baroness Thatcher in 1995. On November 30, 1996, Lady Fraser was made Lady of the Thistle, the first non-royal woman The first woman to be granted a knighthood in modern Britain seems to have been H. H. Norb Sikander become Sayaba, Norb become of Bhopal, who became a Knight Grand Commander of the Order of the Star of India in 1861 at the foundation of the order. Her daughter received the same honor in 1872, as well as her granddaughter in 1910. The order was open to princes and chiefs without distinction of gender. The first European woman to have been granted an order of knighthood was Queen Mary, when she was made a knight grand commander of the same order, by special statute, in celebration of the Delhi Dabar of 1911. She was also granted a damehood in 1917 as a Dame Grand Cross, when the Order of the British Empire was created. The Royal Victorian Order was open to women in 1936, and the Orders of the Bath and St. Michael and St. George in 1965 and 1971 respectively. France. Medieval French had two words, chevaleresse and chevalerie, which were used in two ways, one was for the wife of a knight, and this usage goes back to the 14th century. The other was possibly for a female knight. Here is a quote from Menestria, a 17th century writer on chivalry, it was not always necessary to be the wife of a knight in order to take this title. Sometimes, when some male fiefs were conceded by special privilege to women, they took the rank of chevaleress, as one sees plainly in Hemicurt where women who were not wives of knights are called chevaleresses. Modern French orders of knighthood include women, for example the La Copyright Guinde d'Honneur since the mid-19th century, but they are usually called chevaliers. The first documented case is that of Marie Anger copyright Lick Dutchman, who fought in the Revolutionary Wars, received a military disability pension in 1798, the rank of second lieutenant in 1822, and the Legion of Honor in 1852. A recipient of the Audrey National du Mar copyright right recently requested from the Order's Chancery the permission to call herself Chevalier, and the request was granted. Italy, as related in orders of knighthood, awards and the Holy See by H. E. Cardinale, the Order of the Blessed Virgin Mary was founded by two Bolognese nobles Lodoringo de Gli and Dalla Squared and Catalano di Guido in 1233, and approved by Pope Alexander IV in 1261. It was the first religious order of knighthood to grant the rank of militissa to women. However, this order was suppressed by Sixtus V in 1558. The Low Countries, at the initiative of Catherine Bohr in 1441, and ten years later of Elizabeth, Mary, and Isabella of the House of Horns, orders were founded which were open exclusively to women of noble birth, who received the French title of Chivalry or the Latin title of Equitissa. In his glossarium, Duquesne notes that still in his day, the female canons of the canonical monastery of St. Gertrude in Nivelles, after a probation of three years, are made knights at the altar, by a knight called in for that purpose, who gives them the accolade with a sword and pronounces the usual words. Spain, to honor those women who defended Tortosa against an attack by the Moors, Ramon Berenga IV, Count of Barcelona, created the Order of the Hatchet in 1149. The inhabitants, of Tortosa being at length reduced to great straits, desired relief of the Earl, but he, being not in a condition to give them any, they entertained some thoughts of making a surrender, which the women hearing of, to prevent the disaster threatening their city, themselves, and children, put on men's clothes, and by a resolute sally, forced the Moors to raise the siege. The Earl, finding himself obliged, by the gallantry of the action, thought fit to make his acknowledgments thereof, by granting them several privileges and immunities, and to perpetuate the memory of so signal an attempt instituted an order, somewhat like a military order, into which were admitted only those brave women, deriving the honor to their descendants, and assigned them for a badge, a thing like a fiar's capsh, sharp at the top, after the form of a torch, and of a crimson color, to be worn upon their head clothes. He also ordained, that at all public meetings, the women should have precedence of the men. That they should be exempted from all taxes, and that all the apparel and jewels, 
though of never so great value, left by their dead husbands, should be their own. These women having thus acquired this honor by their personal valor, carried themselves after the military knights of those days. See also, accolade, chivalric orders, distria, heavy cavalry, knightly virtues, knight errant, medieval warfare, nobility, orders, decorations, and medals of the United Kingdom, papal orders of chivalry, counterparts in other cultures, caterfrict, kshatriya, samurai, uia, notes. References Arnold, Benjamin. German Knighthood, 1050 1300. Oxford, Clarendon Press, 1985. ISBN 0-19-821960-1 LCCNA 85-235009, Block, Mark. Feudal Society, 2nd ed. Translated by Mannion. London, Routledge and Kian Paul, 1965. Bluth, B.J. Marching with Sharp. London, Collins, 2001. ISBN 0 00 414537 2. Bolton, Desi Jonathan Dacre. The Knights of the Crown The Monarchical Orders of Knighthood in Later Medieval Europe, 1325 1520. 2D Revised Ed. Woodbridge, UK, Boydell Press, 2000. ISBN 0 85115 5 Bull, Stephen. An Historical Guide to Arms and Armour. London, Studio Editions, 1991. ISBN 1-85170-723-9, Carey, Brian Todd. All Free, Joshua B. Kent, John. Warfare in the Medieval World, UK. Pen and Sword Military, June 2006. ISBN 1 84415 339 8. Church, S. and Harvey, Our Medieval Knighthood v. Papers from the Sixth Strawberry Hill Conference 1994. Boydell Press, Woodbridge, Clark, Hugh. A Concise History of Knighthood, Containing the Religious and Military Orders Which Have Been Instituted in Europe. London. 1784. Link, Edge, David. John Miles Paddock Arms and Armor of the Medieval Knight. Greenwich, Connecticut, Bison Books Corporation. ISBN 0-517-10319-2, Edwards, J.C. What Earthly Reason? The Replacement of the Longbow by Handguns. Medieval History Magazine, is 7, March 2004. Embleton, Jerry. Medieval Military Costume. UK, Crawford Press, 2001. ISBN 1 86126 371 6. Forey, Alan John. The Military Orders, from the 12th to the early 14th centuries. Basingstoke, Hampshire, UK, Macmillan Education, 1992. ISBN 0-333-46234-3, Hare, Christopher. Courts and Camps of the Italian Renaissance. New York, Charles Scribner's Sons, 1908. LCCNA 08-31670, Keen, Morris. Chivalry. Yale University Press, 2005. Lying, Lloyd and Jennifer Lying. Medieval Britain, The Age of Chivalry. New York, St. Martin's Press, 1996. ISBN 0-312-16278-2, Oakshot, Wart. A Knight and His Horse, 2nd ed. Chester Springs, Pennsylvania, Dufour Editions, 1998. ISBN 0-8023. 1297-7 LCCNA 98-32049, Robards, Brooks. The Medieval Knight at War. London, Tiger Books, 1997. ISBN 1-85501-919-1, Shaw, William A. The Knights of England, A Complete Record from the Earliest Time. London, Central Chancery, 
1906 ISBN 0 8063 0443 XLC 74 129966. Williams, Alan. The Metallurgy of Medieval Arms and Armor, in Companion to Medieval Arms and Armor. Nick, David, ed. Woodbridge, UK, Boydell Press, 2002. ISBN 0 85115 872 2 LCCNA 2002 3680.